Shea, I'd like to uh, explode a myth that you may have. Learning styles are something that sound like they ought to exist. Uh, after all, we've all taught classes. Uh, some people get it, some people don't. There must be a reason other than the fact that uh, maybe we're good at it, maybe we're not. Uh, but the reality, unfortunately, is that it ain't that simple. Uh, uh, there is no consistent definition of what a learning style is. Uh, we, don't, we can't really decide on who's got which learning style in any really good way. Uh, we don't really know what to do if we, uh, in response to, to uh, a learning style, and there's some substantial question as to whether, they, whether or not it really makes a difference. There are uh, published so far something over 40 different models of learning styles. No consensus on what a learning style is. Uh, the measurement, uh, the measures are generally of very low quality. Uh, they uh, tend not to measure anything that's, uh, that's unique uh, uh, in, a, uh, in a statistical sense. Uh, they tend to measure lots of times, unfortunately, just intelligence. Um, uh, another thing, uh, uh, another question is what should we do in response? Well, ideally, you'd want something, some kind of an interaction like that where it would make a difference. But if you look at the, rea at the uh, uh, recommendations, the common learning styles, lots of times they say, try a little bit of everything for everybody. Well, heck, if you're going to do that, then why bother? And finally, does it make a difference? Well, there's lots of tantalizing preliminary evidence out there in the literature, but large-scale studies, when they are attempted, uh, typically wind up with very inconclusive results. And that's not a new finding. That's been true in every review of research that's been done on this. Starting in 1977, I read the most recent one like this having to do with reading uh, about a month ago. So I would argue it's a homeopathic fallacy.